a Kangaroo Fern production. Welcome, Welcome to Gorilla Podcast, Fresh Eyes. So what do you think is the best practice of social media? The best practice of yeah. social media is to be as truthful and honest as you can and don't bullshit people because we're pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, how powerful is, so, is social media? Yeah, look, I, I think it's it's powerful, but I think it's it's always been powerful from the day we discovered that it was that it was labor intensive, but quite cost effective. I mean, in 20 years time, we'll be laughing at how we missed a great opportunity and we're sitting in that opportunity now still. People are complaining that digital marketing is costing a lot of money. It's still so cheap, you know, like you look at what a full page ad in a magazine costs, it's like $5,000 um, and you only reach 10 or 20,000 people, you know. So you think about how many people you can reach using social media Social media is very, very powerful if you know how to use it right and regular and using it consistently is I think the really important aspect of social media is being consistent. It's taking risks, which I think a lot of us don't do because we're afraid of looking like a dork or that we are um, going backwards or that we're um, not doing it the way everyone else is. And I think if you worry about what everyone else is doing, you tend to not take risks. I think risk taking is really important, but social media itself is still 90% free, but it's not free in money. What I'm saying is that the barrier to entry is really, really low. Like anyone can set up an Instagram account. Anyone can set up a, um, a blogging site for free. Anyone can, um, you know, set up a YouTube channel. So the, the barrier of entry, that's the power of it is it's open access. You know, not everyone can afford a graphic designer to do an ad in a magazine. Not everyone can afford a TV ad. You know, so from a business perspective, social media is incredibly powerful because it allows you to get your message across. But, and I will say this, we've got to stop looking at social media about what we should be telling people, what we think we should be telling people and be mostly concerned with what people want to consume. And I think that's the difference. It's really hard for me as a social media um, marketer to get that across to even clients sometimes. They want to promote what they want to promote. And I'm like, but nobody cares. And that's really, really hard to get that across to people. So, yeah. So, yeah, so the social media have also a risk. So how do you handle, for example, you have a client. Yes. How do you handle negative comments? Negative comments on their brand? On the brand, yeah. Yeah, look, I love negative comments. I think they're really cool. Um, I love that anyone takes the time to, you know, you think about how you react, you use social media, and I always like to look at this is, how do I use social media? Well, I scroll so fast, um, you know, whatever it is, and I very rarely stop and comment. So if someone stopped and commented, Man, they're they're a good customer. We can turn them around. <laughs> they actually care enough. That's that's the way I look at it first. Is I go in going, wow, you actually care enough. I think most people now are taking it off the feed and turning it into direct messaging. So I think the power of direct messaging is where it's heading twenty twenty. Um, so we're almost like going backwards. It's almost like we tried to get people off the feed when they had a negative comment. And now I want them on the feed because we no longer have an opportunity to speak to many because it's now become one-to-one -one online marketing. Now that's not the definition of marketing. The definition of marketing is one-to-many. So yeah. if you take it to a direct messaging, it's almost customer service and not marketing anymore. So it's really interesting. The whole community manager for social media is gonna go through a rapid change in 2020. Um, when there's a negative comment on social media, you can tell the difference between someone who generally has had a bad experience and someone who's being an absolute troll. So you, you, when you've been around it long enough, you can tend, tell, tend to tell if someone has had a bad experience is, is be open to it because the chances are they're not the only one that's had one and you need to learn from it as a brand. So that's what I would say about that. How about the fake news? <laughs> <laughs> some people doing a comment, but mm. some of them are creating a page against another brand, but it's a fake news. How, yeah. how the social media uh, manager, practitioner I deal with that? Just, I actually think that is um, natural selection. <laughs> is, that, is that from other comp competitors? I just think if people are going <laughs> to get sucked into that, they're not worth my time. <laughs> Honestly, uh, fake news. Uh, <laughs> look, I... Uh, uh, I don't really take much notice of it, to be honest. Yeah. 
So what 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 social campaign you remember that is very successful? Okay, cool. I think one of the ones that I absolutely loved working on was uh, for a launch of Cabin, which is a tiny house. Um, which you can rent and hire and go live in. And what I loved about that was we had about three months lead time before we actually launched what it was. So we had an opportunity to create a buzz and um, with people asking lots of questions, they didn't know what it was about. They knew it had something to do with tiny house movement, but they didn't know what it was and they didn't know where it was going to be. And um, that was really fun. And when we launched that site live through Instagram, (laughs) um, the website crashed. So... Um, yeah, and they got booked out for a really long time. They're a really successful business. They're still going. So for me, it's a very small campaign, but I really enjoyed that one because it was such a um, a creative one to work on. Um, I love coming up with kind of strategies for social media from the beginning. I've worked a lot with Berenberg um, as well, so with them globally. So I worked with them with Amazon in the US and um, working with them now on, on some – you know, some ideas for new product launches, which is really exciting. Um, other campaigns, I really enjoyed doing my own stuff, to be honest. Like the Ideas Chick tips uh, were really fun and I did them for three years. And then uh, when I went and took a contract for six months, I stopped doing them. And then people were asking me where they were. Like I'd be in the bank or I'd be at WOMAD or I'd be somewhere else and someone would go, "Why? where are your tips? And so that was really fun. So on on Instagram, social media, Facebook, now TikTok, what do you think will be happening on influencer marketing? Yeah, well, influencer marketing's obviously had a big shake up with Instagram likes, with all sorts mm. of things. I think Instagram marketing will always have its place. I was speaking to my brother last night, who's a big national, international general manager for a company, and he made me check out the... He had this influencer that he wanted to support with his product and I went and did a bit of research to make sure it was a real person. Um, But I think people still want them. People love word of mouth. People like hearing from other people. Now, I think we're smart enough as a society now to know that they're being paid for it. We're not dumb. I think the original influencer marketing of no one knowing whether they were really, whether they just loved this dress or whether it was being paid is, is... completely blurred now but I think originally we thought it was all organic and natural um I I think it's no different than me taking an ad out in a magazine it's 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 just that their Instagram account is the magazine now so I think that is the difference there I look at social media like each hashtag is a different radio station and then I look at each channel as a different like um like a magazine that's how I kind of use my old school brain to kind of look at social media with influencer marketing i'm about to do a campaign with dogs who are influencers